What's up everybody, David Shapiro here with a uh, one of the rare two video days. Um, this always happens. I finish a project and then I, um, and then my brain just says, okay, next. So I, fin I released a Symphony of Thought a couple days ago and my brain's like, all right, what's next, what's next, what's next? So let's go. I'm revisiting AutoMuse. So um, it, AutoMuse is one of my most popular um, uh, projects four months ago, and it was an attempt to write a full-length novel with fine-tuning. Now, what that did was AutoMuse was like, write a chunk, write another chunk, and they were kind of interlocking, so it was like a chain, right? So like, you know, take the last bit we wrote and add a little bit more, and then take the last bit of that one and add a little bit more, and then summarize as you go. It worked okay, but it got real repetitive, um, and that happens with fine-tuning. And so I've been studying and working on uh, uh, cognitive architectures and simulation. So, for instance, if you check in my repositories and you look at the simulation service and the Nexus, so these are two of the critical services for running um, an artificial general intelligence um, in a sandbox, basically a simulated world. Um, and the simulation, which I have a video on that, um, it, it's able to run a text-based simulation, which is basically just kind of telling you a story. And then you save that in the Nexus. But I realized, hold on a second. A text-based simulation is just a story. Why don't I try and do that and use this method to write a full-length novel? So here we go. Uh, this gives rise to AutoMuse 3. So let me show you. Um, well, first, let me just show it to you running. So that way you can see what, what it does. So the first thing that it does, um, it summarizes the story up to this point. Um, it sets the scene, does some dialogue. Um, you see, like, there's people talking. I've been thinking about moving out of the city. The friends chat and laugh. Um, it, um, and it kind of advances from there uh, sequentially. And what it does is it's summarizing everything as it's going. Um, let's see. And this is still repetitive, but um, it's it, it's getting it's getting better. So this will this will you know everything I do is iterative. Um, yep. So there we go. They're talking. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty repetitive. Um, and so one of the reasons that it's repetitive is because I've kind of toned it down. Um, oh yeah. So they're just having a nice uh, nice conversation. Okay, so uh, all right. So now that you've seen it running, where it just kind of goes in these cycles of summary, scene, dialogue, event, summary, scene, dialogue, event. So basically, it's running each of those as an individual thread. So let me show you how it's doing it now. Um, so here's the simulation um, script. So starting from the top, while true, so it's an infinite loop. First thing that it does is load the whole story. So where's the story saved? The story is saved in the logs file. So it's all saved as a sequential. Um, uh, chronologically sequential set of logs. Um, and this is what I do for Miragi, for my artificial general intelligence, too. Um, and that's all a story is. It's a sequential, a chronologically sequential series of events. Um, and so then what it does is it summarizes it. Um, so it'll, it'll take the whole thing, generate a summary. Um, it'll, save the su it'll save the summary. Um, and then it'll, it will say, okay, given everything that's going on, give me the scene. Right, just just set the scene, um, and that'll give you a nice, pretty little scene. Um, so here, like the coffee shop is cozy and inviting. Um, so that gives you a little bit of prose, right? Um, and then once you get the scene set, um, we go through the characters. And so here, here's one thing that I did for the characters was there's um there here's here's the prompt that it uses. So you give it a character profile, the summary, and the recent events. Um, and it, that's what it uses to go from there. And you can check what these look like under the uh, GPT-3 GPT logs folder. So here, here's an example of that prompt where it says, imagine the next character action uh, or dialogue for Jane Smith. Um, here's her character profile. So this is an agent model. Um, summary, and then, so the summary gives you the whole background of what's happened. Um, so then Jane Smith, next one action or dialogue. I don't know, Jane says. I haven't really thought about it much. I guess I'm just getting uh, doing one doing things one day at a time. Um, so there you have it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, uh, that's the character part. So yes, um, here's the summarize prompt. Here's the scene prompt. So it just says, here's the full summary and here's the recent events. And then I ask it to set the scene. 
Um, here's the character action. And then finally, there's the event. Um, so the event is, so it says, given the following story, imagine a rarity event to advance the plot. Describe the event in one or two sentences. So here's the summary, and here's all the recent logs, and then it reiterates the instructions because the Instruct series does really well if you have the instructions like an Oreo uh, sandwich. So it's like uh, you give it the instructions once, and then you give it the, the meat, and then you give it the instructions again. Um, yeah, so there's that. Um, right, all right. So we've got a little bit of story going. Again, it needs a little bit of help. Um, I had to tone it down. Because, oh yeah, so here's, here's the loop where it does, it gives you the character uh, stuff, um, and then finally it does the event, and then, it, the, then the loop continues. So I have the rarities up here, um, and I had common, likely, unlikely, interesting, exciting, funny, stressful, irritating, ordinary, extraordinary, and shocking. Okay, so on a previous iteration, the shocking event was that the coffee shop got blown up and they all died. Uh, so obviously I didn't know what to do with that. And then um, the last iteration that I ran just before I started recording was that um, one of the people had to leave and it didn't know how to handle that either. So they just kept going over and over and over again, just saying like, okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Bye. And it didn't actually break. So there's still a little bit of trouble with the, with the scene having some forward momentum, but this took me a couple hours to do. Um, and the idea is that you're kind of separating out the character threads from the scene and the plot. So for anyone who has studied um, the art of, of story writing, there's three primary components. There's setting, uh, character, and plot. So setting is the world, that's where it's happening. Character, that's the people. And plot is the events, what's happening around it. Um, so those are the three primary ingredients. And so I figured if you run each of those as an individual simulation, um, it might work. Uh, so far, it's, eh, it's, eh, eh, meh. Um, all right. But, so we've got an example here. So let me just do CLS. There we go. Python compile story. Open AI is not defined. What do you mean it's not defined? All right. So let me show you what I was working on. So basically, the idea is you run the simulation, and then you end up with a whole bunch of log files. And as I showed you, the logs are, so the GPT-3 logs, these are the raw log files here. Um, and then the logs are here where it's just, this is the actual like story where it's stored. Um, so here's an example of what it looks like. Um, actually here, I'll save this as a backup story backup. Um, so this is, this was a previous iteration. I think, oh yeah, this is the one where it got bombed. So you can check, it'll be story underscore backup dot text where you can see it like it got bombed and they're all sad and crying, but they're also dead at the same time. So it's a little, little loopy wasn't quite there. Um, and there's also, there's also all kinds of other little things of repetition. So you see where it says like Ahmed twice. Um, so I'm working on fixing those little bugs and stuff. Um, this is the problem when you get recursive stuff. You see a Jane Smith, Jane Smith, Jane Smith. <laughs> Minor problems. Um, anyways, so the compile story, what this does is it takes all the logs, compiles them together like this. Um, but then what it does is it breaks it up um, into, into each recursive chunk and it writes it as actual prose. And it's actually not too bad at that. So let me show you where I've gotten so far with that. So Python compile story. Oh, whoops. I opened it and then forgot to add open AI. Sorry. Hold on. Import open AI. And then I think from time import time and sleep. I think that's all I need to add and it should be good to go. Yeah. Okay. So this should take just a second. And basically what it's doing is it's reading those logs and then it's going to convert them to prose. So here you go. So you see where it's, um, it's giving you some, some, some actual prose moving out of the city and it's, it's being repetitive again. Yeah. Well, of course the source material was repetitive, so no surprise there. Um, yep. There's no point in getting too far ahead of ourselves. Yeah, okay. So then if we come back here and we do come to the story. So here we've actually got some got some 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 prose. You know, the coffee shop is cozy and inviting, um, with a cozy fireplace and comfortable chairs. This is obviously not the best. This is not like particularly compelling, right? This is not, um, why is my mind blanking? I cannot think of a single 
famous author right now. Um, yeah, okay, my brain is clearly off. Anyways, this is kind of like run-of-the-mill stuff, so it needs it still needs a little bit of work. But the idea is here, where it's there's kind of this background simulation that's running the environment, and then there's other individual simulations running the characters. Um, so this is AutoMuse 3. I'm going to keep working on this. Uh, well, I'm not going to make any promises. What, I, what usually happens is I get these things to a certain point and then I abandon them because I come back a few months later and do something far more sophisticated. So no promises, but this is, a, this is an interesting direction to go in. So I think that's all for today. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.